Okay, today we're talking about repairing a failed exhaust fan. So what happened to this wall mounted exhaust fan is a bird's nest was up inside the discharge apron and the bird's nest material dropped down and clogged up the centrifugal wheel which of course caused it to stop spinning and burnt out the motor. <gasps> so we're going to need to replace that motor, do a complete inspection of all the parts, and you can also see the uh, vibration isolators need to be replaced. And in the bottom of the discharge apron, you can see the remnants of the bird's nest material. Wow. So I cleaned and inspected all the parts. I just used a regular degreaser. Um, it's particularly important to make sure the centrifugal wheel is clean um, because if it has caked on debris, it's going to cause it to spin, not be balanced properly. You know, if you have debris caked to part of it, it's going to cause it to wobble, cause vibration, and cause your new motor bearings to fail prematurely. So make sure you get everything nice and clean. Make sure nothing's cracked or broken or bent. Here's a parts breakdown. Um, this is a eight inch direct drive uh, Fumex fan. Uh, the original manufacturer, even though it had a Dayton uh, logo on the side of the unit. And it is controlled by a uh, thermostat uh, this particular motor is only a single speed motor, it's not variable speed. And I had to find a new motor because the motor part number on this breakdown was no longer available. <gasps> so looking at the data plate of the specs of the old motor, I was able to find a new motor. It was also a Dayton. But keep that in mind. If you're working on an older exhaust fan, the original motor may not be available or discontinued, so you might have to source one with the exact same specs, but it might be a different, newer, updated part number. And this diagram shows you how the unit is assembled. So just a close-up view of the old motor data plate. You can see it's a 1 20th horsepower, 1550 RPM, 115 volt, 1 1.5 amp. And again, originally Dayton, there's a the model number. So here in the maintenance shop, we're going to start the assembly process. And that's the motor hood. There's our centrifugal wheel. And you'll note there's two mounting or set screws that hold it to the shaft. Make sure you leave those counterweights on the centrifugal wheel. Don't take those off. It's balanced at the factory. This is the base plate that the motor will mount to. And here's our new motor. You can see it's also a Dayton, but a different model number, even though the specs are the same. There's our two wire leads. So pretty straightforward. There's four nuts that will attach the new motor to the top plate here. I'll try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. And then these two pieces make up the little junction box that will mount to the unit later and make our wire connections inside of. And then that is the BX cable connector that we'll use. That'll secure the BX cable to that box. There's our mounting nuts. So I'll grab a wrench and a ratchet. I'll go ahead and get these bolted together. So again, pretty straightforward.
Just tighten the nuts down. Now, if you find that the centrifugal wheel hits those studs, you may have to trim those studs down a little bit. Um, I had to trim them down about a quarter of an inch because that's the issue I had. I'm not going to waste your time showing you that on camera, but just note you may have to trim your studs down as well. You may not. Also replacing those vibration isolators or like a little rubber bushing that helps reduce vibration between the base plate and the discharge apron housing. They just pop in those holes. Wow. You'll note there's a flat spot on the shaft. So make sure you land one of your set screws on that flat spot. This one has two set screws. One of them needs to land on that flat spot. So just trying to line it up. Should slide on fairly easy. I'm checking my clearance. You can see the weights I'm talking about on that fin or that blade. Keep those on there. They're there for a reason counterweights. And then you'll want to use a wrench to tighten your set screws down. And I'm just checking to make sure it spins smoothly, it's not wobbling. So I'll tighten the set screws down by hand first. And grab a wrench or a pair of pliers in this case. Side at the wall. We'll go ahead and do a dry fit. The power is off and I'm checking my clearance of that centrifugal wheel and the discharge apron or that base to make sure they're not dragging or scraping. My clearance looks good. Pulling my BX conduit through hole in the discharge apron and then through the hole in that top plate. This is a single phase 120 volt motor so you just have hot neutral and ground. You'll note the black leads. Since this is a shaded pole motor single phase it doesn't matter which lead you hook up to your hot wire and which to your neutral wire it'll still work. So how do you know if it's spinning in the proper direction? Well, once you hook up your leads and test it, the air should be blowing out of the building towards me. The old motor, the junction box was mounted directly to the motor itself. This new motor, the junction box, I had to mount to the side or on that top plate if you'll notice. It's not screwed to the motor. 
but it's tucked against the motor so that the motor hood will still fit on. And before we close up this junction box, once we make our connections, we'll turn the power on to verify proper rotation. Everything is tight, everything is connected. We'll flip the power on. See it blowing out some debris. Yep. Woo! It's spinning in the proper direction. Turn the power off. And for good best practice, I like to wrap black electrical tape around all my wire nut connections. And then we can go ahead and tuck those wires neatly into the junction box and install our cover. Please consider liking, sharing, subscribing to the channel. Helps us move up in the YouTube algorithm and helps us reach more people to help them with their maintenance and repair tasks. Install that motor hood. And there's three acorn nuts that secure the motor hood to that top plate. Something else I did after I recorded this video is installed a metal mesh screen around the opening of this exhaust fan to prevent any future bird nests from being built inside of the unit. So I highly recommend you doing that too, if it's an issue for you. Make sure everything's tight. Flip the power back on. And she's running. Everything looks good. And that's it. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. And thanks for watching.